Okay, now it's time to make some modifications within our generated project. Our goal would be to, to put some, let's say, code to process the external interrupt callbacks related to all three buttons. All of the callbacks are predefined as an empty functions with a weak uh, attribute within the HAL GPIO.C file. We can track it from interrupt C file. Uh, here we can see the declaration of uh, such a callback. And uh, the callback is in fact the last function called within the interrupt um, procedure. So after checking what was the root cause of the interrupt, after clearing all of the flags, the callback is called. And this is in fact our role to fill this function and execute um, the proper operations. Additionally, uh, within the main wide one loop uh, for both cores, uh, we would uh, increase uh, once per second two variables for Cortex M4, it would be VAR underscore CM4, and for Cortex M0 plus, it would be VAR underscore CM0P. The code modifications could look like this. So on the left side, we can see the ARM Cortex M0 plus code, so the declaration of the variable, and then let's say the increase within the while one loop in main.c file. And the same story is on the right side for Cortex M4 devices. So the variable declaration within the user code begin private variable section in main.c file. And then within the main function, within while one loop, uh, increasing the variable and waiting one second. The implementation of the callbacks on the left side, again, ARM Cortex M0 plus code. So at the beginning, we will check what was the root cause, which button has been pressed, and then we will change the state of the LED, which is assigned to the same core, and the same uh, story on the right side for Cortex M4. Please have a look on the left side, we've got the Project Explorer, which contains two, core, uh, two projects, one for Cortex M0+, CM0+, and the second one for ARM Cortex M4, which is marked CM4. So it is done only by adding the proper suffix at the end of the project name. And uh, what is uh, worth to, to be done is to select this link with editor field. And now if I would open uh, from the core main.c files in both, from both projects, and I can switch between them, I can see immediately from which project this uh, file is coming from. Okay, so now we are ready to perform some coding. I would start from Cortex M4 code preparation. Let's just have a look what is inside the generated project. We can see the standard initialization of the HAL structures, then the clock configuration and just peripherals, in this case only GPIOs. And before while one loop, we can see the booting of CPU to trigger of the boot, because uh, WL55, uh, the dual core device, is starting in such a way that after the reset Cortex M4 is always starting automatically and uh, Cortex M0 Plus must be uh, triggered uh, by uh, Cortex M4. And this is one of the examples how it can be done. This is generated automatically by CubeMX or CubeIDE. Uh, we can see similar function with an low layer libraries as well. Okay, so we'll start our coding with uh, defining some global variable which we will use within the live expressions. So it will be 16 bit without sign type uh, var underscore cm4 initialized to zero at the beginning. Uh, so this would be our first point. Then um, we will increase this uh, variable uh, within a while one loop and we will use some delay to not make it too fast so we will increase it once per second. So this is the first operation we would like to use within the Cortex M4 core and the second one would be related to the interrupts. Uh, so we are using 
let me just save it. Uh, we are using um, external interrupts. Uh, so let me go to this stm32wlxx-it.c file, which contains all of the, let's say, uh, interrupt functions body bodies uh, for intern uh, let's say important interrupts like uh, NMI handler some faults uh, then SVC uh, debug monitor and pentsv and Sysdig of course plus interrupts which we have activated within the um, our operation so in our case it is um, pin PA1 uh, so our B2 button uh, so it is already pre-configured uh, if we go to this uh, Mm. Uh, uh, over here it's enough to press F3 uh, button and I'm landing with an HAL GPIO.C file I can see that there is an internal checkup what was the source of this uh, interrupter and then clearing the flag and ask a uh, calling of the callback callback is defined as a weak function uh, so it can be overwritten within our code this will use it so i would just copy this uh, let's say uh, header uh, and i would put it within cortex m4 the good uh, location is this user code uh, begin 4 which is uh, after all of the peripheral initializations okay within this callback um, what i need uh, to do is to check what was the root cause of the of the interrupt and uh, then uh, make the proper action. In our case, uh, once the B2 button would be pressed, uh, I would like to toggle both LEDs, LED1 and LED3, which are assigned to the same core. Uh, so first I need to check whether um, uh, really my pin 1 has been pressed. So I'm checking whether it was this, if yes, uh, I will, let's say, toggle both LEDs. So I will use HAL, GPIO, and I know that there is a toggle function, so I press on the T and then control space. It is filling, uh, proposing some, some function. And then I can use, let's say, the label name, so LED1, and then control space. First is the port, the same for the pin, LED1, Control space and pin, and the same I would do for LED free. So hal underscore gpio underscore t control space now LED free control control space first is port and instead of this LED free underscore control and I select pin. Okay, we've got the complete interrupt procedure for Cortex M. I can save it and now we will switch to Cortex M0 uh, plus so I go to the second main I would start from variable initialization so again 16-bit value without sign var underscore cm 0p and we'll initialize it with 0 and with an let's say main function i can see that there is only initialization of the of the functions and um, then um, we've got let's say directly this while one loop within while one loop uh, we will just increase this variable and like in a cortex m4 we'll do it once per second that's it and uh, we need to implement as well the callbacks for interrupts so it will be exactly the same callback structure and uh, in this case uh, we've got two buttons mm, so b1 and b3 b1 is connected to pa0 and b3 is connected to pc6 and both will perform uh, led2 toggling led2 is connected to pb9 so again i would check uh, whether uh, any of my two pins are let's say activated and if yes I would toggle LED uh, 2 in this case 
first is point, second one is pin. And for the second pin, that would be the same. So a PC6, so GPA underscore pin underscore 6. And I would perform exactly the same operation. So how the GPIL toggle and the LED2 board LED2 control space pin. Okay. And that's it. I need to save all of the let's say files, so I will use this save all. And now we can build the code. Just to make some things more automatic, we can connect both projects together. Within Cortex M0 uh, project, I just click on the left button on mouse and highlight this project, making it active. I click right button on mouse, go to properties, and within project references, I'm selecting this. WL Basic Dual Core CM4. I press apply and close. And now, if I press the build and the hammer uh, to, to build the projects, the first one uh, to be built would be a Cortex M4 and the second one a Cortex M0. Okay, so both projects are built. I can do it. I will check it by pressing one by one. It is a time to configure a debug session. Thank you for your attention.